everybody, my name is Grace and today I'm going to continue reading the book A Christmas Carol Part 6. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none of other of my of my race return the ghost. We will find him here. What then? If he be like to die, he had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Scrooge hung his head to hear his own words, quoted by the spirit. It was overcome by penitence and grief. Man, said the ghost, if man you be in your heart, not amended. Forbear, that wicked can until you have discovered what the surplus is and where it is. Will you decide what man shall live? What man shall die? It may be that in the sight of heaven, you are more worthless and less to fit him than millions like this poor man's child. Oh God, to hear the insect of the leaf pronouncing the too much life among this hungry brother in the dust. Soon, Scrooge bent before the ghost rebuke and trembling cast his eyes upon the ground. But he raised them speedily, hearing his own name. Mr. Scourge, said Bob, I would give you, Mr. Scourge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed, said, cried Mrs. Cratchit, readily. I wish I had him here. I'd given a piece of my mind to feast upon, and hope he got had a good appetite for it. My dear, said Bob, the children, the Christmas day. Will be Christmas Day, I'm sure," said she, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mister Scourge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows. It's better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, was Bob's mild answer. Christmas Day. I drink his health for your sake, and and the days," said Missus Cratchit, not for his. A long life to him, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He be very merry and very happy. I have no doubt. The children drank the toast after her. It was the first of their proceedings which has no heartiness. Tiny Tim drank it last of all, but he didn't care two pence though for it. Scorch was the org to of the family. The mention of his name cast a dark shadow on the party which not dispelled or for full five minutes. After it had passed away, they were ten times merrier than before. There, from the mere relief of scourge, the beautiful being done with. Bob Pratchett told them how he had a situation in his eye for Master Peter, which would bring him, bring him in. It obtained for five and sixpence weekly. The two young Cratchits laughed tremendously at the idea of Peter's being a man of business. Peter himself looked thoughtfully at the fire from between his colors, as he was deliberating what particular investments he should favor when he kept into the receipt of bewildering income. Martha, who was a poor apprentice at a minute, milliners then told them what kind of work she had to do and how many hours she worked at a stretch and how she meant to be light a bed tomorrow morning for a good not long rest tomorrow being a holiday she passed at home also how she had seen a compass and lord some days before and how the lord was much about as tall as peter i wish peter pulled out his colors so had you wouldn't have seen his head if you had seen there, been there. All this time, the chestnuts and the joke went round and round. By and by, they had a song about a lost child traveling in the snow. From Tiny Tim, but a plaintive little voice and sang it well, very well indeed. There was nothing of high mark in this. They were not a handsome family. They were not well dressed. The shoes were far away from being waterproof. The clothes were scanty. And people may have known, and very likely did, 
the inside of the palm bro brokers. But they were happy, grateful, pleased, and with one another. And contented with the time. When they faded, they looked happy yet in the bright sprinklings of Pierce's stodge at partying. Scourge had his eye upon them, and especially on Tiny Toe, until the last. By this time, it was getting dark, and snowing was pretty heavily. Scourge and the spirits went along the street. Brightness of the roaring fires in the kitchens, parlors, and all sorts of rooms was wonderful. Here, the flickering of the place shows preparations of a cozy dinner. Hot plates begin to and before the fire and deep red curtains, ready to be drawn to shut out the cold and darkness. There were all children of the house, running throughout the snow to meet their merry sisters, brothers, cousins, uncles, and be the first to greet them. Here again were shadows of the window blinds and guest assembly, and there was a group of handsome girls, all hooded and fur-booted, fur -booted. And are chattering at once. They trip lightly off to some near neighbor's house, where war upon a where war upon a single man. Who saw the mentor, artful witches? Well, they knew it in a glow, but you had judged from the numbers of people on the way to friendly gatherings. You have might might have thought that no one was at home to give them welcome when they got here instead of every house expecting company and piling up as high as half chimney high blessing on it how the ghost exulted and how bad breath dread of beast and opened his capacious palm and floated off outpouring with a generous hand its bright and harmless mirth on everything within his feet. The very last fighter, who ran before dotting the dusky street with specks of light, who was dressed to spend the evening somewhere, laughed out loudly as the spirit passed through the candid lamplighter that he had any company but Christmas. So, thus all the cat, a Christmas carol, part six, and our scene on plus seven. Goodbye.